I'm going to be heading to Durdledore. Perfect. Bubble of car. Thank you. I've got no fuel. Let me through. Whoa, jeez, jeez. Welcome back to the second part of the mighty Ducati V4S review. I did an initial impressions review of this a couple of weeks ago and I said a second part of this video is going to be involve taking this bike on a decent trip and seeing what the fuel range is like, you know, what's it like on a, when you're going to be sat on it for a long period of time, how comfortable is it? So join me today, we are heading down to Doodledore. No. Not Dumbledore, this is Doodledore. This is a natural rock formation on the Dorset coast. One of the most photographed uh, places in Dorset, basically, down on the Jurassic Coast. No, not Jurassic Park. The Jurassic Coast. So join me while we take this beauty for a bit of a longer ride and see what it's like, comfort, ergos, fuel range. This should be very interesting. It's also bloody freezing today, so I've got to wrap up. So sit back, grab yourself a coffee. I could really use one. And Chopsy, roll the intro. Do it. So what do we have planned as part of this video? I'm going to be heading to Durdledore. I think I called it Doodledore at the intro, but Durdledore. Uh, it's a limestone rock formation, like a bridge into the water. You have to, I think it's about half a mile sort of walk down to it. So we park the bike, half a mile walk, I bought my drone, you know, and we'll get some good footage of that. And it's only about 100 miles away. You know, I want to get there before it gets dark. As we know, it will be getting dark about four o'clock. It's mid-January. It'll probably start getting dark about four, maybe even dark by four. So the time now is uh, five to 12. So it's about, it's about two hours. I've got a nice windy route with the Kalimoto. We're taking some sights. And I'll give you feedback of what the bike is like. I filled it up. So when I started this, I've got, it's got a full tank. I've covered 17 miles on that full tank so far. Now what's going on with this sat nav already? Guess where it's showing where I've previously been, but not my actual route. Well, we may have to switch to the Ducati navigation at this rate. The great thing about this bike is it's got integrated like Android Auto that so covers the whole screen. So I will demo that, but I've not got it on this phone because I wanted the Kalimoto for the twisty routes, you see. Cubby hole, phone out. West Lutworth, Dirtle Door entrance. Hee <laughs> hee, Dirtle Door. Okay, so we're on the Google, the Google Android mappy things with the Ducati Connect. So quite pleased I got that working because I think there were some issues with that app working when the bike first came out. Let's sneak through on this guy, a bit naughty, but I don't want to be stuck behind you. But I think there were some issues with this connectivity not working initially. And some of the other people I've seen review this bike, you know, they couldn't get that to work. So it's nice to see that. And that for me is the ultimate sat nav. Google Maps. You know, you've got traffic on here as well. I've got everything on here, so that is very, very nice. Another nice, oh, that's bright. Another nice little feature with the uh, Multi is it's got the self-leveling rear suspension. So I've got that on auto. So because I've got the panniers loaded up with drones on my camera gear and, and my sandwiches taking out most of the weight, it's, you know, it, it's automatically leveling the rear suspension, you know, adding enough, uh, well, actually height. I don't think it's just preload. I think it's actually, doing height adjustment as well but only on the front or on the rear sorry so you've got the auto leveling rear i've got the bike in touring mode so of course all the modes are tied into electronic suspension now as they are on bikes these days so if you go into the touring mode you get the softest suspension you can customize all that which is brilliant if i go press the mode button you know it's just a simple I press the mode button then up and down on the jog wheel to what you want so i've actually got my sport setting you've got to close the throttle I've got my sport setting set for the suspension as hard as possible and straight away I can feel the texture of the tarmac better. I can tell it's stiffer now and uh, I've also got the wheelie control off in sport mode as well. <laughs> so as we now give it some beanage and I've got less traction control as well so that's the other thing to worry about but now as you accelerate now I've got wheelie control off. Over 
psychic power! <laughs> Little bit of a sip rep, we've got 91 kilometres to go. I don't know why the sat nav is set to kilometres. I've obviously not changed that, have I, somewhere. The actual bike is on miles, but the sat nav's on kilometres. I've got 137 miles range to the tank left and I've done 36 miles so you know this is a real world test so even though this bike's got a I think it's a 22 litre tank this has got I think you're going to be under well under 200 mile range but we'll see how we get on I think that is the the I think the only downside I can see so far with this V4 motor see what I like about it is it is super smooth there's hardly any vibrations and i'm not just sucking up to ducati if something's wrong you know I'll, I'll tell you guys that i don't like something and you know a lot of times you know with the street fighter i said already you know i didn't like the, the the feel it was hard work this isn't like that at all i'm so pleased to say that this is so nice i mean there's hardly any vibrations i mean like the xr is a sort of similar bike to this i guess you know a sports bike on stilts but the XR suffers with that buzziness you know the BMW four cylinders suffer with that slight buzz through the handlebars this being a V4 you know it's got some little vibes through the bars but they're much you know they're in between I guess a, a V twin and a, and a straight four you know the sort of buzzy it's not buzzy at all I mean buzzy is the wrong word it's a bit more thumpy but they've really reduced the vibrations you know you don't notice anything it is perfectly comfortable and I actually suffer with um, you know like tingly fingers and stuff if a bike's too vibey I get the tingly fingers I think it's sort of an age thing I think I've got a bit of a uh, um, oh, what do you call it when you get your, your hand your nerve damage in your in your wrists bins for the sea can't remember I suffer from that and if I've ridden buzzy bikes you know, that, that really plays me up but this is fine the, the vibes on this are beautiful the Ducati has spent a long time you know getting this this engine smooth and it's really paid off I almost wish this engine was in the Street Fighter just put this engine in the Street Fighter don't mess about with the Panigale Desmo engine just put this valve springed multi-engine in the Street Fighter yeah this is only this is 170 horsepower so it would mean it would lose its headline 200 horsepower figures this is a much better suited engine for the Street Fighter than what's in it at the moment I've actually got it in touring mode I should maybe chuck it into sport mode in a minute but look at these twisties that are coming up around here but yeah it's very precise the bars are so wide on this you've got masses of leverage you know I mentioned that in the first review I think it's it's got the widest bars of any bike I've ever ridden absolutely huge but it's not just the fact you can change direction quick because of the leverage I'm not even pushing on the bars I'm just using my lower body in the seat to change direction I'm not touching the bars well, I'm not touching the bars you know I can still change direction incredibly fast so it's not just the leverage in the bars which is enabling that that's just the bike's natural handling so they've properly sorted this right let's uh, into the mode I think we'll now go for our sport mode thank you very much oh jog wheel sport mode close the throttle one thing I have well I can tell straight away it's got initial more grunt corner dry corner one thing I can tell you, what I, I really like about this bike, it's got none of those Ducatiisms. And what I mean by that is, I always find something which annoys me with a Ducati. Whether it's the, the switch gear, I can't push it properly, the menu systems where they've done something which is a bit annoying. I can't, I can't this bike has none of that. It's none of those characteristics which normally spoil a Ducati a little bit they spent a lot of time I think getting this bike I'm gonna say it, 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 it it's almost perfect this bike I think it is the ultimate bike on stilts it's the ultimate performance adventure bike the KTM Super Adventure I think could be a little bit more because that's got the anti-dive technology I f without testing them back to back I feel that the the super adventure could be a little bit more agile around the twisties perhaps I know that's got a 19 inch front wheel as well but the anti-dive suspension on that 
This still dives a little bit, not too much actually in this, in this sporty mode, but the anti-dive on the Super Adventure is amazing and it really gives that bike a, a real sporty Super Moto feel. The Super Adventure feels like a big Super Moto. This doesn't quite feel like a big Super Moto, but it's still very, very good. I've never been an adventure bike type of guy. Well, this thing, this could actually change all that. I've got zero wind on my chest, zero. Nothing here, nothing here at all. The wind is here, right at the top of my helmet. And that's, I think, why I'm getting a bit of buffeting, because everything is just hitting this very top. So if I was a little bit shorter, if I was TMF size, I'd be feeling nothing sat here. It would be absolutely in a perfect bubble of calm. It's sucking all my jacket up because, you know, the, the vacuum, because it's so calm here and it's not there, it's sucking my clothes off. <laughs> the bike is sucking me off. Ah. Ooh, but it brakes. Yeah, there's a little bit of dive on the brakes, but it's not bad, you know. Slightly more than the Super Adventure. Down a cod. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh yeah, baby! Yeah, even at higher speed the direction changes are pretty darn good, you know. The GS is an incredible bike. It's such an accomplished bike, but this... I know this is a lot more money, well, oh, you fully spec a GS I suppose, and it's, it's knocking on for this. But I think this is better. I think this is better. I know... Well, we've covered all the servicing thing. I mean, there's 36,000 mile service intervals on this engine, valve checks. You know, the GS is 12,000 miles. So you've got three GS uh, valve checks to every one G check on this. So I'm sure, even though this will be more expensive to check the valves, this will be cheaper in the long run or the same price with it. It's certainly not any more expensive anyway. So I don't think even the running costs of this, apart from the extra fuel, of course, you know, come into it so much. It's more expensive to buy, but it's a Ducati. You know, you would expect that. I think it's got it's got more tech than the GS. There's no adaptive cruise control on the GS. The heated seat on this, I've got the heated seat and I've got the heated grips on, is thermonuclear. I tell you, that, that heat is, it takes a while for the heated seat to, to build up so you get the, the temperature, but it's absolutely toasty. I might have to turn it down in a minute. The grips are also very good as well. I'm getting a lot of heat through the grips, even though I've got big, thick winter Knox gloves on, the Zeros. I'm still getting that heat coming through the bars. Cause that's the other problem, isn't it? When you, you, you ride with thick winter gloves, you then can't feel the heat from your heated grips, but I can say they're hot enough that that's coming through even a thick pair of winter gloves. So it's lovely having that heated stuff. It's just my feet, my feet are getting a bit cold. Where, where's my heated socks? I know I mentioned at the beginning that, you know, they no longer do an enduro version of this bike. So if you want to go off-road, this is your off-road version. I'm not going to be going off-road as part of this video because as I say, this is a 22,000 pound motorcycle. I do not want to break it and it's got road focused tires so and it's all wet and I'm not doing it I'm not doing it but what Ducati have done they spent a long time getting the ergos right on this bike because it's got this new uh, frame you know the monocoupe frame and a new swinging arm it's actually really really thin between your legs so even though it's a v4 it's still very thin it, it's you know my legs are really close together and it's really quite nice to grip with your calves you know if you want to stand up and i can imagine off-road even the bars seem like a really nice height this feels perfectly heighted for me to go a bit of off-road on that is really comfortable and if you're on a long trip like this even though that seat is really well padded i think a little stand up from time to time just uh it's just lovely to stretch your legs and rest your body I've just found that there's a nice twisty route here on the way in, dry roads or semi-dry. 
mostly dry, let's call them, so we can have a bit of a play. Automatic self-leveling rear suspension. And I tell you, it is a lot of fun. Loads of feedback, nice and stiff when you go on the brake, so you can use the front brake as if it was a sports bike. You know, without having to sort of balance it with the rear, it doesn't upset the suspension too much, you know, by braking on the front. Yeah, it, it's a weapon. It's definitely a weapon, this. There's a lot of fun, you know, if you like bike sporty, if you like the feedback you get from a sporty bike, this delivers that. <laughs> oh, Winterbourne, there we go, into 30. That's enough of that. Let's put the cruise on. 21 kilometres to go. We arrive at two o'clock, so I've cut my travel distance time down a little bit. I did stop in Salisbury just to change my batteries. We should arrive about two, so 23 minutes time, we'll be at the Dirtle Door. Nationals! I love the way the front goes all light when you power over a crest. Yeah, I don't know what gear you're in. The front goes all light as you power over. I love that. Ooh, a little bit careful. There's a lot of muck in the road. Whoa, jeez, 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 Jesus. I thought I was coming off then. Thank goodness for ABS. I thought I was going to be testing the enduro mode then over the uh, over the grass. Thankfully, <laughs> those stylemas hauled me to a stop. Jeez, man, that was a bit scary. Time to slow it all down a little bit, chops. I would suggest after that. Bloody hell! Oh, got the old heart. Got the old ticker going that. So we're nearly there, we're in Dorset. I think this road basically leads us to the car park where we have to jump out and uh, walk to Dirtledore. Like I said, I think it's about half a mile walk from the car park to the site. Like site? Is it a site? Yeah, I guess you'd call it a site. And uh, the ride has been very enjoyable, apart from where I nearly died. What I am finding actually is the seats. I'm, my ass is hurting a little bit on this seat. I've been on this a couple of hours and uh, I think they've fallen foul of the problem that a lot of manufacturers do. To make these big tall bikes suitable for shorter riders, they make the seat thin so you can get your legs down easy. Well, I, I've got long legs and I, the seat's too... Th I'm not sat on the seat enough. I've got too much of my ass hanging over the side of the seat so you've got all your weight on a small part of your bottom and I'm feeling it a little bit. I'm having to stand up a few times. Thankfully it's really a really comfortable bike to stand up on. So you can stand up, but that's not the point, is it? The seat's got plenty of padding but it's a little bit thin to enable those short fellas to get the feet down. <laughs> I'm not discriminating against short fellas. They've got every right to ride a big adventure bike as anybody else. But there almost needs to be two versions. A, a wide seated version for people with big bottoms and a, a version for, for shorter people to get their feet down. So yeah, that's the only criticism. What would be a fantastically amazing comfortable bike, I'm getting a little bit of pain in my bum now after a couple of hours. There's the sea, the Jurassic Coast. Might be able to find some, there's loads of sightseeing down here. I'm gonna come back here again you know, when I do other bike reviews because it's an amazing, there's some amazing views along this coastline. Absolutely incredible. So I'm going to come back. There's a rat. There's a rat around across the road. I'm going to come back when, uh, again, on a different bike and we'll look at another, you know, tourist attraction, a tourist attraction, another natural beauty spot of the area on a different bike. But uh, I've really enjoyed this ride today. It may be, may have been chilly, but, uh, oh, tanks. It's been very enjoyable. Okay, is this the parking? We are here. We are here. So, park the bike. T 
take the drone, get my gear, and let's go and have a look at this natural phenomenon. <sighs> Hello, that's a long way down. I managed to get the drone working after waiting around for an hour to reinstall the DJI Go Fly app. So that was fun, but we got my drone footage. I would have been annoyed if I'd come all this way and not got my drone footage. But there she is. The bike is actually in pretty good, pretty clean condition. I thought it would be much... Ah, I'm glad I didn't drive off and forget about that. Well, we're here because you won't be satisfied until I take it off-road, will you? There we go, gravel lane, stood up very comfortable stood up as I mentioned and uh, yeah it's got an enduro mode and all that of course but uh, there you go you can go off-road on it <laughs> satisfied so there we go the Ducati Multistrada I uh, this is great I think as a package I think it's the best adventure bike I've ever ridden the super adventure the new 1290 Super Adventure is perhaps a bit more focused on speed and a bit more of a supermoto on steroids but I think as a package the tech on this the comfort apart from the slightly skinny seat which is a little bit disappointing if you've got a big bum like me but it's got they've tried to make a bike which fits everybody haven't they and as a package this is incredible so many toys you know it's a lot of money you know the downside is it is a ridiculous oh no, sum of money, but I'm not going to say it's worth it, but if you can afford it and you want the best, I think get this. It is as simple as that. And I'm going to test the Pikes Peak version because I've been so impressed with this version. I mean, the, the, the sat-nav. The sat-nav is the best bike sat-nav I have ever used. It even tells you the speed limits where speed cameras are because it's Android Auto. So I've never seen, you know, I know you can, can you do that on the Africa Twin? I know you can do uh, the iPhone version, but Android Auto, it's just really good. It is just very, very good. So as a package, I think it's unbeatable, but I'll be back on the Pikes Peak at some point this year because I want, really want to try the Pikes Peak. So that could be more that's the supermoto on steroids i'm dreaming of so uh this has really excited me for the pikes peak so when i know when i do get a bit older a little bit more crusty i'm still gonna add that get my kicks and be comfortable so there we go guys thanks for watching as always if you've enjoyed it please give me a subscribe i'm gonna be riding next well i'm gonna have the super duke super duke the uh gsx sgt few other bikes like that I've got on the cards coming some off-road action the Ducati Hypermotor rebuild will be coming back soon as well uh, all sorts going on you'd be silly to miss it press that subscribe button thanks guys see you later come on girl come on girl so that's 173 miles with zero left on the range so that's literally 173.1 miles we've covered and we've got zero range left. It's Fuel Light Roulette. We are playing Fuel Light Roulette. Sorry, I can't sit in traffic. I've got no fuel left. Out the way, you lot. You normally get a bit in reserve, I think, when you've got one of these systems. Thank you. I've got no fuel. Let me through. Whew. Petrol station. We made it.